All right, let's continue working on the physics engine. So here's where we left off. We have created the, uh, the structure for the, the collision manifold. And the collision manifold is going to have the information we need to resolve the collision. And the things I want to work on today are these collision contacts. I want to find out where does the collision actually happen, or, or where is the point in two-dimensional space where the collision is actually occurring? Where is that one point? Now, in two dimensions, there, it, there's a possibility of two points of collision. If we have two polygons intersecting, it's possible that their edges collide completely parallel to each other, in which case we're going to end up with two points of collision. Otherwise, we're going to have a single point of collision for all other cases. All right, so in our code, here's our collision manifold. Uh, we actually want to move over to our collisions uh, class. And inside the collisions class, we have some functions that we are no longer using. Uh, this intersect polygon method here is an old one that we're not using anymore. Here's the new one. And so I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that code because we're not using it. And I think we have a few other functions as well. So this particular intersect polygons function we're not using. This is an old one. We have a, the new one right here. So I'm going to get rid of this old intersect polygons function. And this find arithmetic mean, we don't need that anymore. We were using that in some of our older code. And so I'm going to get rid of that one. All right, first I'm going to write a function that'll find the collision point for a circle to circle intersection. I'm just going to call this find contact point. And since this is a circle to circle collision, it's only going to have one contact point. And I'm just going to populate these fields here, kind of like our intersect functions here, how I give it the circle center, the circle radius, and then it's pretty much going to look exactly like those functions as far as the, as far as what we're passing in as the arguments. Okay, so we have the center A and the radius A. That'll be the first circle. All right, and then we're going to actually pass out as a vector the collision point. And I'm going to call that CP, or contact point. All right, and this is the simplest one. First of all, we just need a vector that's pointing from the first circle to the second circle. And it actually doesn't matter which circle you pick. Um, just pick one circle and point from the center of that circle to the other one. Okay, and so now I have a vector that's pointing from this, the circle A, the center of circle A to the center of circle B. And now I want to normalize that vector. And let's get, kind of let's draw what this looks like in our drawing program. So if we have our two circles, we find the collision, and then we actually separate them using the minimum translation vector. Okay. All right, and so now once we've pulled them apart, we just want to find what's the closest point between the two objects. In this case, a circle to circle if this is our A circle and this is our B circle, um, we actually just created a vector that points from the center of A to the center of B like that. And our intersection point is gonna happen right here. And all we have to do is take this vector here that we just found, normalize it, and then multiply it by this radius right here. And when we normalize it and multiply it by the radius, we're just gonna move along this line until we get to the edge of the circle, which is gonna put us right there. And that is going to be the uh, the collision point or the point of intersection. All right, so back in our code, uh, let's go ahead and normalize that vector. And then all we have to do is move from the center of A by that, by that vector. And actually, instead of uh, calling that AB, I'm going to call it the direction vector. That's the direction we're going to move from the center of A to get to the point of collision. And so then the CP is just going to start at center A. We're going to move by the direction times the radius of A. And that is everything we need to know. In fact, we don't actually need to pass in the radius of B. We do need to know the center. So yeah, in fact, I'm not even going to pass that in as a parameter. We can go ahead and get rid of that. We just need the center and radius of one, and then the center of the other, and then we have everything we need. And so let's go ahead and test this out. Uh, before we move on any further, I need a, a kind of an overall function that's going to determine what type of shapes these are before I find out the, these actual contact points. So I'm going to make another function here. Uh, this is just going to be a find contact points. And this is just where we're going to pass in the actual bodies. So let's just pass in the two bodies that are intersecting. All right, and this function is going to be able to pass out whatever information it finds. So whatever type of shapes these two bodies are, it's going to figure out what they are, and then it's going to pass out either one or two contact points, depending on what happened. Okay, so I'm just going to pass out uh, some vectors that are the contact points. So I'm going to call this contact one, and then contact two, and then finally we're going to pass out an integer that is the actual number of contact points, and I'll just call that the contact count. Okay, so all 
right, and this function is actually going to work very similar. Um, let's scroll down here. We have this collide function in our world, and I probably actually want to move this to our collision class, our static collision class. In fact, yeah, I'm going to actually do that. Let's take this collide function out of our world class. I'm going to put it into our collisions static class. So let me grab this. I'm going to cut it out of here, and I'm going to put this into our collisions, our static collisions class. Paste it right in. So this is going to be a static function now, collide, and I don't think anything else is going to need to change. I think it's already naturally a static function. So back in the flat world now, let's make the changes. This is a static collide function from the collisions class, so I just need to change this here. And everything else is exactly the same. Okay, so that looks fine. So, okay, let's go back to our collisions class. Um, now, this find contact points is going to work a lot like this collide function. We pass in the two bodies, and then this function is responsible for be determining what type of bodies these are. And so I'm just going to copy these if statements that we have from before. So let me copy this code. I'm going to paste it right in here. And obviously, I'm going to get rid of the collision functions here. So I don't need to return collisions because I'm going to find the actual collision points. OK, now the shape type, um, I need to copy that from up here as well. So let's copy this shape type. That looks good. Um, I'm going to give the contacts some default values. So this would just be uh, zero vectors. OK, and the uh, default contact count will just be zero. OK, now depending on what type of shapes we have that uh, are actually intersecting, we're going to find out the contact points. OK, and the case we want here is, is if both shapes are a circle. And so I'm going to go right here to this case where shape type A is a circle and shape type B is a circle. And let's just put the function in here. So from the collisions class, we're going to find the contact points, um, and we're just going to pass in the, uh, the parameters. OK, and we don't need the radius from the other circle, so just be the position. And let's pass out the contact point. And in this case, it's going to be contact 1, because there's only one possible contact point between two circles. OK, and now that we have that one contact point, we're going to make sure that the contact count is equal to 1. And then we should be all done with that. OK, so now we have the ability to find the contact point between two circles. Let's go back to our flat world class. Um, here's our step function. And we're going to scroll down here to where, actually, to where we are actually creating our contact manifold. So we found a collision. We've moved them apart. And now we're saving the contact information. Well, before we actually create this contact manifold, we're going to use the collisions function that we just created. We're going to find the contact point. And actually, now that I look at this, the other contact points functions, we don't want to be public. All right, so back in our collisions class, so this is going to be a private function. We don't need to go outside of the collisions class because that's all going to be contained inside of this function which determines what type of shape it is, and then finds the collision points. So I'm going to make that a private find contact point between two circles. So back in our flat world, now we're finding the contact points. We're going to pass in the two bodies, and let's pass out the actual contact points. And then we'll get the contact count as well. There we are. So now the, uh, we have a function that's finding the contact points, saving the information to contact one, contact two, and the actual contact count. So now let's pass this contact information into our contact manifold. So before we were just passing zero because we, were, we weren't actually using it. Now we're going to actually pass in those contact points. So I'm going to put contact one there. I will put contact two here and then contact count. All right, so now using this function, we're going to find the contact points and then pass that into our contact manifold. If it finds anything other than a circle-to-circle -circle collision, it's going to return zero for the contact count. So there won't actually be anything, any contact points to resolve because we haven't found those functions yet. But we do have one for circle-to-circle. -circle. And let's test that. Down here, once we're actually resolving the collisions, we're getting the contact manifolds. I'm going to create a list that's going to save all of those contact points so then we can draw them on the screen and see if they look correct. All right, let's scroll up here in our world class. And at the top, I'm just going to make another list. I'm going to call this contact points list. OK, in our constructor, let's go ahead and create the contact points list. 
Oh, and actually I made this private. Um, I'm going to make this public because I want to be able to display it. Uh, I want to be able to get the information and then display it in our game class. And so I'm actually going to make this a capital contact points list. And this list, it's only going to exist so we can draw the information. This contact points list isn't going to exist. We're going to get rid of it. It's strictly here for debugging purposes so we can see the information. All right, just going to capitalize this C right there. Okay, so now we have a list that's going to contain all the contact points. Let me scroll down here. Here's the step where we actually resolve the collisions. We get the contact manifold, and then we send that into our resolve collision function. So I'm actually going to store the contact points in our contact points list here. If the contact count is greater than zero, meaning it actually found some contact points, let's go ahead and store them. So the contact points list, I'm going to add a contact point and we'll just get the first contact point. So contact, contact one. And then let's find out if there's actually two. So if, if there was another one, so let's get the contact count is greater than one. Let's add the second contact point. Okay, so if the contact count is greater than zero, we're going to add the first contact, meaning there, there has to be at least one contact. So we're going to add that one. Now, if it's greater than one, that means there's actually two contacts. And so we're going to add the second one as well. All right. Um, and now the only thing is uh, we actually want to clear that contact list. So up here, before we enter our collision and movement step, let's go ahead and clear the contact point list. Okay, so we're clearing the list. We are looping through and we're adding all the contact points to our list. Okay. Now let's go ahead and actually draw these contact points. So, and actually before we do that, let me go ahead and run this and just make sure everything seems to be working like it did before. We shouldn't see any changes to what's happening. Yeah, that looks uh, exactly like it was before. I don't see any changes. So that is good. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the game class now and from the world, let's scroll down here to our draw function. We're drawing all the bodies in our world. Uh, the next thing I want to do is loop through all of the contact points and draw those. Let's go ahead and get a reference to our contact points list. Now let's just loop through all of those points. And I'm going to draw them as little filled in boxes. So wherever there's a contact point, we're just going to draw a filled in box right there. I'm not sure what I want the actual size to be. Let's do 0. 0.5 and 0. 0.5 and we'll see what that looks like. And the color will just make this, um, I don't know, maybe a, let's try an orange color and just see what that looks like. So the draw box function wants a mono game vector two and we're providing a flat vector two. So we need to use our conversion function and let's go to vector two on the contact points at index I. All right, okay, that takes care of that. Let's run it. Let's just see what we're getting for a result. Okay, so no contacts right now. Let's draw something. Okay, so a box to box, that's not going to give us any uh, contact points right now, but a circle to circle. So if I draw a circle on top, there we go. In fact, let's see if I can, perfect. Okay, I'm seeing the contact points and they look really good. In fact, I want to make this a, uh, I want to make this a filled in box. So let's make this draw box fill. I'm just going to start stacking some circles here and let's see what it looks like. Okay, there we go. So I have some stacked circles and that looks exactly right. We're seeing contacts right there uh, where the circles are intersecting. Let's draw one here and you can see those look right as well. All right, so we've written the framework for how we're gonna find the contact points between our general objects. And then specifically here, we've written the code to find out how to find the contact points between two actual circles. Next time, let's get into how do we find the contact point between a circle and a box or a convex polygon.